Hello everyone, Jolene here from Bookworm Adventure Girl. Welcome back. For those of you who have been watching some of my last few videos, you will notice that I am now showered and clean and I have returned home from uh, roughing it at the cabin. If you are new to my channel, thanks for joining us. Um, today I am going to be talking about uh, some of the books that I have received during the month of June. And I think I only purchased um, two, maybe three of these books uh, this month. So I have been trying to cut back a little bit on some of my book buying, um, at least for a little bit. And, and I mean, it's not like I don't have anything to read, so I will be okay. Um, also, and I know I've been saying this a lot, but normally this video would have gone out on Friday. Um, but I received my second vaccine on Wednesday, which is great, and I am very happy about that. Um, but it pretty much knocked me on my butt, to put it politely, and I could not move on Thursday. I slept for almost 20 hours. It was so brutal. Um, and then Friday, I could move a bit, and I was walking around more, but still, like, incredibly tired and, uh, slept a lot more and then by Saturday I was almost back to normal and just felt this slight foggy haze all day so it meant putting off filming this video until I could speak coherently um, hold up books because I definitely wouldn't have been able to do that on Thursday um, anyway all is well now and I am happy to finally be able to film this video and get it out to you and I will get it up before the next Mondays with Margaret video which is tomorrow already oh my goodness um, so back to the books I have a good pile here there are like a perfect 10 books to get to all together. So let's get started. Um, I'm going to start with three books that I received uh, because I won a book package through Word on the Street, which is in Toronto, and they do um, like author interviews and various book related events. So I actually won four books in this package. Um, one of them was Gutter Child by J.L. Richardson, which I have talked about. Uh, a few times at least on this channel uh, because I've already uh, read the novel and I think this was like the third or fourth copy that I've received in one way or another and it is actually going to the person who won that novel as part of my 200 subscriber giveaway. So the other three books that are here um, are, I will start with this one, The Centaur's Wife by Canadian author Amanda LeDuc. And I am so excited to have a copy of this book because Amanda LeDuc has been on my radar for a while and I have never read anything by her. She is one of the key players when it comes to The Fold, which is the Festival of Literary Diversity, uh, which I've talked about before. And that takes place annually in Brampton. And I also know that she tends to write about disability. So I believe that she will have characters with a disability or that somehow um, or in some way disability is a theme in her work. So The Centaur's Wife seems to have a lot of interesting elements in it, um, including that the main character, Heather, whose uh, legs were damaged at birth. So the world is coming to an end in the story. Uh, so it has a bit of that dystopian, apocalyptic feel to it. Meteors have destroyed where Heather and her family live, but they can still see the mountains, which is a place that city dwellers have uh, been forbidden to go to for some time. But Heather has been to these mountains before, and she has a deep connection to them. And during this crisis end of the world, she continues to feel a call to the mountains. And there seems to be a bit of like fairy tale retelling and some fantasy with this novel. So next is Eel Virus, and it is by Canadian poet Lillian Nekakov. Um, and this is just a beautiful cover. There are, um, these poems were written during the pandemic in 2020, uh, while Lillian was in lockdown in Toronto. And I think it says here that there are 113 poems in the collection. I have never read Lillian Nekakov uh, before, and I'm looking forward to learning more about her through her poetry. 
And then the final book that I received from Words on the Street was Ghost Lake by Nathan Nigan, Newton Adler. Hopefully I'm saying that correctly. Um, Nathan is originally from Ontario, uh, now lives in BC. He is an Indigenous two-spirit writer who is um, a member of the Lac des Mille Lacs First Nation. So his previous work has been um, a horror novel and Ghost Lake is considered a companion volume to it. So Ghost Lake is a collection of 13 interconnected stories and each of these stories are mysterious and they are of um, Anishinaabe culture and legend. So if you have been watching my channel, at least for a little while, you will know that this really appeals to me. I love reading Indigenous stories. I love books that, you know, have diversity. Um, so, and this month is Indigenous People's uh, History Month, uh, as well as Pride Month. So this was a great gift to receive, and I'm sure that I will be reading this one real soon. So thanks again to uh, Word on the Street. I was so excited to win all of these like great Canadian books. And uh, I'm looking forward to uh, reading some new authors uh, that I'll hopefully like. So um, you might remember that in May I talked about some books that I was uh, looking forward to that were, I think, being published in June. So this one was published in June. And one of those books was the debut novel called Unlocking by Canadian author Amy LeBlanc. Uh, so I received this novel from ZG Stories and the University of Calgary Press. Uh, thank you to them for sending this along. Um, I'm really intrigued by the premise of this novel. Now I know I've already talked about this, uh, but I will kind of just give you a brief overview. So Louise Till is the main character and she inherits her father's hardware store. And one of her jobs is to cut keys for the customers. And she begins to cut copies of those keys for herself. So at first she doesn't use the keys, uh, but then she eventually gives into temptation. So I can't wait to see where that goes and to find out what happens. Uh, next up is another Canadian author who sent me a memoir that I just think is so awesome. This one is called Adventure by Chicken Bus, an unschooling odyssey through Central America by Janet LaSole. And I love what Janet and her husband have done here. They homeschooled their kids, but this is not your typical homeschooling. And actually, in fact, to me, this is how schooling should be done, if at all possible. Uh, their primary resource for schooling their children is responsible world travel and I am so in love with just the idea of this because I have always uh, talked about travel as being a form of education um, and especially if it's done in an intentional way um, so that I can't wait to read more about these adventures and um, if you have ever been on a bus with people and chickens uh, you know it's an adventure. So this is another book that kind of, you know, ticks off a whole bunch of things for me, you know, travel, check, adventure, obviously, check, uh, learning about other cultures, you know, check. So there's so much about this book that just says, yes, please read me. So um, next up, is another debut and another Canadian author. I know, I know, shocker. Um, Gatekeeper Press sent me this novel and it's Behind the Red Door, how Elizabeth Arden's legacy inspired my coming of age story in the beauty industry. And this is by Louise Claire Johnson. Now, I am going to call this a nonfiction book, at least at this point, because I'm not sure yet if it is more memoir or more biography and I have a feeling it will be a mix of both. I think it's going to explore the world that Elizabeth Arden um, was in when she founded her company and what that looked and felt like um, and then what it was like for Louise Claire Johnson as she worked for Elizabeth Arden. Um, so I will definitely keep you posted about this one. I think it's, uh, I think it's going to be interesting to learn about both of these women. 
For the next book, um, we are switching continents for <laughs> another debut novel. Um, this is called Insignificance. It's by James Clammer, and it's from the Republic of Consciousness, and they're always publishing like new and interesting books. And the little write-up that they sent with it sounds really interesting. Um, it says this, this novel takes you through 24 hours in the life of Joseph Forbes, a 44-year-old plumber back on a first job after a psychological breakdown, which has caused him to take some time off work. I'll let the rest of the story tell itself, but it's a book that's both profoundly human and formally experimental, a rare combination. A couple of recent good examples of that combination are probably Lucy Elman's Duck's Newburyport and Toby Litt's Patience. So it does sound interesting, and the back of the cover says Joseph is trying to focus on plumbing job, but is too distracted by the terrible things that have been happening to his family. Joseph believes that his son has tried to murder his wife. Joseph is afraid that his wife is going to leave him. Joseph is terrified that his, this, his, sorry, Joseph is terrified that his son will try to kill again. So the book itself is like less than 170 pages. Um, I'll probably read it on a cold or rainy day. It might be a good one to sit down and just read it in one sitting if I can. Um, so now we'll be coming back to North America with an American poet. Um, Randina Sheldon has asked me to read and review her collection of poetry and art called Face. And Randina sent me an arc and can I just say I love the feel of this book and she also sent me a lovely note and this very cool bookmark um, that has a moon hopefully you can see that in the video it's just really pretty so thanks so much Randina and I do admit that I cheated a little bit and I already flipped through it quickly and I love like how the illustrations are used and um, the different sections the way the book is put into the different sections sounds very interesting um, when I'm asked to review poetry, if I have the time, I like to do it uh, because I know that poetry is harder to find reviewers for and it's harder to get poetry out there. And then the bonus for me is that I sometimes find really good poets and that I would, you know, have missed otherwise. Um, and I really have a good feeling about this one. So I will keep you posted. Um, once I have a chance to read it. I believe the publication date for this is sometime in August. So I will let you guys know uh, what my thoughts are before then. And a thanks again to Randina for uh, trusting me to read your poetry. So the final two books are um, books that I purchased. And one of them was through my subscription with um, Sweet Reads. And that is The Good Father by Wayne Grady. Uh, not to be confused with Wayne Brady. That's a totally different guy. Okay, so uh, now Wayne Grady is also Canadian and he has written quite a bit. But the only other thing that I have read by him is a book he co-wrote with Canadian scientist uh, David Suzuki. So this book, um, it seems is very different than his usual writing, um, since this is a contemporary fiction novel, and it's about a father and daughter, and their relationship has become one of great distance, both uh, physically and emotionally. Uh, and then something ca catastrophic happens that makes both father and daughter kind of look at their relationship, reflect on themselves, and figure out whether or not their relationship can be salvaged or not. Um, the novel is told in alternating perspectives, which I love. And I think that if this novel has good character development, uh, it's one that I am really going to enjoy. So last but not least is The Secret Keeper uh, of Jaipur by Elka Joshi. Now I've talked about Elka Joshi before because she's an author from India and her debut came out last year called The Henna Artist, which was in my top 20 books of 2020. So The Secret Keeper is the follow up to that novel. And I know I already talked about this novel too, uh, because it was one that I was anticipating in June. But just to give you a quick reminder, uh, so this novel continues the story of one of my favorite characters in The Henna Artist. And that is Malik or Malik. Um, I'm not sure 
you know, which way it's supposed to be pronounced. And I find when I'm reading it, I pronounce it one way or the other. Um, so we'll go with Malik right now. Um, so Lakshmi, who is the main character in the henna artist, she is the henna artist, is in this one as well. But this story focuses more on uh, Malik and his work as an apprentice on the newest cinema that is being built. And then on opening night, the balcony of the cinema collapses and Malik believes that there's probably more to the collapse um, than it just being an accident and he wants to find out the truth. So I have a hunch that Lakshmi will be like a mother figure to him and someone who helps, helps him out. So I am really looking forward to continuing uh, along the journey with these characters. So that is all of the books that I have received this month. Um, I didn't realize until I was doing the video that there were mostly Canadian writers. I know that, um, and you guys know that I try to always highlight Canadian writers, you know, among many other authors, um, but this just kind of happened this time that it was mostly Canadian authors. So please let me know if you have read any of these books uh, or if you're interested in reading any of them. I would love to hear your thoughts um, or let me know if you have hauled any books this month that uh, that you are excited to read soon. There are so many great books out there uh, and as you know I want to read all of them. So as always I look forward to chatting with you in the comments. Thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and don't forget to make every day an adventure.